so effectively what we've got here, um, we're taking just a regular audio signal from a Galaxy S phone, it's just uh, some Autechre, um, basically taking that signal and putting it through a TL494 motor controller and turning it into a PWM waveform. Um, effectively what this allows us to do is switch a MOSFET bridge, which is pumping about 35 volts at 4 amps through a flyback transformer inside of this enclosure. Um, what that does is modulates this transformer to produce enough voltage to break down the dielectric constant of air. Now, when you're changing the pulse width, you're actually allowing the current through this plasma that's being generated to change with the, with the music that you're pumping through it. So that, allows, that causes the heat of the plasma to actually fluctuate with the music that you're playing through it, causing the air around it to vibrate. Um, we're also using the amplifier that we built for this purpose. It's a low pass filter that's uh, adjustable, so you can actually change whatever low frequencies you're sending out to whatever kind of accessory speaker. Um, right now we've got the cutoff set at about one kilohertz, so we're only sending the low to mid-range audio through this woofer down here. Hey, can you turn off the, uh, the no, not that, Let's turn off the amp just so we can get it this by itself. Get an idea of what it sounds like without it. Uh, the electrode width is also adjustable so that you can tune it for different flybacks. You get different frequency responses with the size of the arc as well, if you can keep it stable. Oh, that three-quarter inch is the arc? Yeah, yep. Yep. Our high frequency response is somewhat limited just because of the flyback transformer that we sourced. Uh, we just ganked this out of a random CRT and it's not exactly high performance. So it functions at about 25 kilohertz, which is well below the optimal frequency that you want for actually reproducing audio, which for a CD is 44 one. But as for you know just the parts that we had lying around, I think it does pretty well. <laughs> Some of the distortion is caused due to the aliasing of frequencies above 12.5 kilohertz, which is the input rate of our signal. Okay. But as soon as we find a higher frequency uh, flyback transformer, we can swap that right out and adjust some trim pots, and it'll be good to go. Yeah, we've also got some problems with our top electrode. Um, we believe it's steel, and steel doesn't really do too well with the temperatures we're seeing. Like for plasma of this temperature is probably close to, I don't know, two or three thousand Kelvin, just off of a random guess. So it's, as you can tell, it gets red hot right there at the tip, but if we could get a hold of some tungsten to use for an electrode, it would probably do a bit better. You can really smell the ozone, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oddly enough, it's only the top electrode that gets hot for the negative electrode. If we flip them, the bottom one would be the one that gets hot. We're not really sure why, but the, uh, the positive electrode is always cool. Hmm. Very cool, guys. What do you call this thing? At the total disdain of the professor that was guiding us on this, or I, I say guiding in quotation marks. Uh, we call it the plasma arc speaker because he hates the word arc. <laughs> Excellent. Very nice, guys. Thank you. Thank you.